Hi, welcome to another episode of Live on What You Grow. Today I'm going to be sowing my second crop of corn. Today is August 12th, and I don't know if there's going to be enough time for this to mature or not, but it's always the grand experiment. We are always sowing. Just so happens that I picked our first corn from our first crop today, and I'll show you that in a second here, but what we're growing is called Yukon Chief, and it's a very good choice for home gardeners who have limited space or who want to grow in containers, or especially for those who are growing in cooler locations, because this corn was specifically bred by Dr. Arvo Kaleo of the University of Alaska Agricultural Experiment Station in 1958. And it was, it was created actually, or specifically developed to germinate at lower temperatures and to grow well in cooler soils where sweet corn usually can't be grown. So they grow this corn in Alaska where they have the very shortest seasons that you could possibly imagine. So today is August 12th. So this is a 55 day to maturity corn. So you could just say two months. So today is August 12th, September, October 12th. You know, it, it definitely is a possibility that it could mature prior to that time. Of course, as the months get and the weather gets a little bit cooler, then the corn is going to grow a little bit slower. So I don't consider this to be a waste of time, even if it doesn't mature before that time. So like I said, I harvested my first corn today and this corn was a 110 day to harvest corn. And normally corn takes between 90 and 110 days. This is one of the longest varieties and this is a white corn or maybe a, you call it a silver corn, but look at how beautiful this corn came out. And I showed you on an earlier video, the tillers that were growing on the corn plants and how that it was a sign that we could plant our corn closer together and still have a great harvest. This is a great, great ear of corn here. And by the way, just so that you know, and I mentioned this on the other video also, each one of these silks goes to a single kernel of corn. So there's going to be, you know, if there's 500 corn kernels on here, there's going to be 500 of these silks. And each one of these silks has to be pollinated by the pollen that falls from the top of the corn plants and to pollinate each and every one of these kernels. And as you can see, this corn is very, very full. Every one of them has been pollinated, and I attribute that to the great soil that we have. So, like I mentioned, that we had about 24 plants growing in that garden bed. So, I'm going to plant 40 in here, and some of them may not come up. But, like I said, I planted those probably in May. I'm going to try to plant these today. If they don't mature, then next year I will know that I need to plant them maybe two weeks earlier or four weeks earlier or whatever it is. So I'm going to use this planting, whether I get ears of corn or not, is going to prepare me for what I am going to be doing next year. And the silk, by the way, can be used medicinally. You can dry them in your dehydrator and you can make a tea out of them. And it is especially good for urinary tract infections or even just urinary health. So anyway, let's put that aside right now. Now, these are the indestructible trays that I talked about. And I just want to stress that it's so very important to have quality materials like this, so, you know, because, you know, right now they're available. We don't know if something should happen and you have to live on what you grow. You're going to want to have the very best quality. And not only are they the very best quality, they're going to last a lifetime, 
but it makes a difference in the quality of the seedlings that you are growing in them because these 40 cell trays hold just the right amount of soil, you know, especially for our corn plants, but they also have very large holes on the bottom and that, you know, I don't want to get into that completely why that is just so important, but they're very easy to get out. But it also is um, beneficial for root pruning because when I plant these corn seeds in these cells, I don't want big, long roots that are coming out of the bottom. I want the roots to stay within these cells and having those very large holes on the bottom. I don't know if you can see those or not. By having those large holes, the roots are not going to go out into the, I'm not going to have this filled with water, but I use it for bottom watering. So I will put water in it above the level of these ribs that are in here, put this tray in there, and then it will water from the bottom and it will wick up by capillary action. And then after that, I'll dump the water out and put the tray back in here. And that way there is air under it and the roots of the plants are not going to go into the air. If there was water in it, they would go down into the water. We don't want that. We want them to air prune and you get phenomenally fantastic root systems by doing this because you're forcing the plants to make all of these side roots. They're not the big thick roots that don't really absorb a lot of water that kind of circle around in pots that's called being root bound but they produce these capillary roots. And then when you put them into your garden soil, they just take off amazingly. So I am going to put a layer of compost down in that bed, you know, to provide a lot more nutrition because I want these plants to grow as fast as possible. So I'm going to take my pencil. I'm just going to poke a hole in the center of each of these. This really is a superior way to start your seedlings. I don't know what's wrong with the dog. Probably there's some squirrel. If you say squirrel, <laughs> her ears go up. She knows what a squirrel is. She knows, do you want to go outside? And she knows, uh, do you want to go for a ride in the car? She knows all of those important things, important for dogs. Okay, so I'll take my corn seeds. And by the way, this is an open pollinated variety. So you're able to save the seeds and replant them next year. It's a fantastic variety. You should have this variety, even if you have a long season, because if you harvest your main crop of your 110 day corn varieties, you're able to plant this one after it in the same bed. And this is going to go in that exact same bed that the corn is in right now. And living on what you grow means to, one of the things that living on what you grow means to, to have succession crops where you have two or three crops in that same growing space. Now I'm probably going to get about two more weeks of harvesting in that corn. And that's the reason why that I'm planting this now, because it's going in that same bed. I have to empty that other bed out, but I want to, uh, I want to let this grow and to be already that high before I put it into the bed, before I finish growing that other, that way you don't, what you don't do is you don't pull that other corn out and then start the corn. You want to start this two to three weeks earlier than you finish with the other crop. That way, as soon as you pull that crop out, that you're going to be able to put the new one in. That is a very important thing because you're gaining a lot of time on your growing season. We 
live on what we grow. We've been doing a lot of harvesting and we are going to be making quite a few videos on different ways to preserve your food, whether it is dehydrating or pickling or fermenting or freezing or dehydrating or canning. There's lots of different ways that you can preserve your harvest. And I can't even tell you how many years that we would grow an abundance of food and it would just rot out in the garden. We don't want to do that. We can't do that anymore. If we, if you're, if you're living, learning to live on what you grow, you know, there's definitely the possibility that there could be food shortages. And even if there aren't food shortages, we know that it is very expensive and it is using a lot of your income is going toward food. I know that it is with us. I, it's, you know, it's nowhere near as far as it used to be, but we're getting higher quality food. We're enjoying what we do. We enjoy gardening. But I think that the most important thing is that we are learning the skills so that we know how to do it in case something happens. You don't know if something is going to happen or not, and nobody does. But if something did happen, we would be able to grow food for ourselves. And, you know, stop and think, you know, this is what our website, this is what our YouTube channel is about living on what you grow. It's not about you're going to get a 1% increase in your harvest if you do this. It's about doing the big things and doing the important things and learning the skills to do this. So, you know, a lot of times I, you know, I get feedback and comments and I just want you to understand that I'm trying to do it as quickly as possible to get all of this information. The amount of time that I've been spending in my garden has been cut short a lot. It takes, you know, you might be watching a five minute video, but it takes, you know, six to 10 hours to make the video between doing any research that I have to do, coming up with the materials, editing, loading. It's, there's just a lot of work to it. And, you know, maybe if people can do it a lot faster than I can, but I'm trying my best to do whatever I can do. So live on what you grow and learn to live on what you grow. And we will see you on the next video. So thanks for watching.